of the debate is the adoption of Citizen Amendment Act 2019 is a positive step for India. I will repeat that one time. The adoption of the Citizen Amendment Act 2019 is a positive step for India. Now, in terms of the flow of the debate, uh, those speaking for the motion, uh, you will speak first in round one. There will be two rounds. The first will be an opening statement uh, lasting three minutes. Uh, the second round uh, will involve questions. Now, uh, please pay attention to your serial number. Um, in round two, you will be given an opportunity, serial number wise, to ask a question to your opposite number, okay? So speaker one will ask a question of speaker one uh, against the motion and vice versa, right? So please pay attention to the opening statement of your counterpart and try and address the questions then. Now in terms of giving a response, you may answer the question and then you may uh, elaborate or go off tangent so long as you want to pick up and provide any rebuttal to what has been said by other members, okay? So firstly, you must answer the question. Secondly, you can give any other points in the rebuttal. Is that clear? Okay. Good. So, serial number one, speaker for the motion, that is the representative from St. Joseph College. Please take your time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, respected judges, and my fellow competitors. I am in motion site. I think the adoption of CE is a positive implementation of this our country. Why? Because being a democratic country, we, we use this humanitarian work. Through this humanitarian, we bring four important aspects. Number one, economic boost to coordination of different brotherhoods in within the country. Fourth, helping the underprivileged people in the country. And lastly, is like a uh, support as well as respect of religion. Why I'm, why I'm thinking about these four, uh, four principles is that with these four principles, I think we can grow our, our economy as well as our country into a stronger and booster. Many facts and figures have been uh, thrown up. Why? Because people don't know the exact uh, answers of this CAA. And so with this, I think with the implementation of these four principles, our state can go through this important as well as make uh, strongest nations in the world, as well as I think this, the implementation of CAA by the BJP is not on the religious basis, but on the minorities of the people who were persecuted. Thank you all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Moderator, judges, and all present here. I will be speaking against the topic the adoption of Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is a positive step for India. First of all, let me start with facts. Our Northeast population is a meager population of 41 million. That's it. And out of this 41 million, Assam has 30 million. So the rest of the Northeast states, it has just a population of 11 million. So now, let's see. The the Bangladeshi people that Modi is trying to bring in, there are more than 12 or 13 million of Hindus. So that alone covers the rest of the population of the Northeast. So now let us see as, now, uh, as they put this uh, Citizenship Amendment Act in motion, since this uh, illegal immigrants will be coming, it will only be a matter of few years that they populate the rest of the Northeast as well. I mean, this is probably the first step, the Citizenship Amendment Act, there might be other acts coming up in the near future that we may not be aware of. I mean, if this is a, this is a big, big step for the government, and if it is successful, I'm sure they will be taking up other steps to secure their vote back in the Northeast and secure their power over the government. And I believe that it's nice to help other countries and other refugees as well, but how, how, how can we expect ourselves to help other people when even our own country is not able to provide basic amenities for so many people? I mean, the recent NRC about the registration of citizens, there were many problems in Assam, and many of the bona fide citizens were not able to register themselves, especially the lower class, uh, lower class Muslims, the poorer citizens. They were not able to register themselves, even if they were bona fide citizens of Assam and in India. So how do we expect things to go smoothly in the Citizenship Amendment Act? So I strongly stand against the motion, against the topic of the Citizenship Amendment Act, being a positive step for India. Thank you. 
A very good afternoon to one and all, respected judges, chairpersons, and all my dear friends. Today, I'm for the motion, I'm supporting for the motion. And being an Indian, I support the CAA. Because uh, now, what we see in India is that most of the people, they are protesting against the CAA. Because most of the people, they don't know what is CAA. Uh, recently, I saw in the news that the news anchor asked one of the uh, few students, what is CA? But their answer was like, CA is a CA. They don't know what is CA. They're just protesting against the government without knowing that what the topic is all about. The Citizen Amendment Act is all about the, uh, the foreign immigrants, uh, foreign immigrants like the Christians, Hindus, all, and every other religion except the Muslim, because the Muslims, they are already in the huge number in their country. The Afghanistan, Pakistan, they are, they, they are their country only. So I don't think that they, they should uh, be able to enter the India. Um, and, and the team, uh, the CAAs, and uh, people, uh, people just supporting without that. I think that this is a big problem for us. We don't know what we are doing, but just supporting, just protesting for the government's a CA or whether it's a GST or anything. We never satisfy it, whatever it may be, the bill or whatever. Uh, first, we need to, even at the early, even I, I, I was against them, against the GST CA, but after, after being true with the CA, even I support this, because it's for the good only. Thank you very much. Constitution Amendment Act. The act that allows the entire country in rage and revolt was solidified on 11 December 2019. I strongly stand against the notion that this act is positive for India. The Indian soil was partitioned in 1947 and this act marks the partition of the Indian soul because it is against India's principle of secularism. In 1976, the Indira Gandhi-led government included the word secular in the preamble under the 42nd Amendment of the Indian Constitution, and this act is totally antithetical to what India stands for. This act clearly violates Article 14, equality before law, Article 21, right to life, and Article 15, that no citizen of India shall be discriminated on the basis of religion, race, caste, sex, or place of birth. As for Article 13 2 of the Indian Constitution, this act violates or infringes the rights conferred under the fundamental rights and as such it is considered to be void. This act spells out specific categories of people who will be granted citizenship. And what is more striking about this act is that you could be because you not only have to you could be an Ahmadiyya from Pakistan, a Hazara or a Shia from Afghanistan, or a Rohingya from Myanmar, you will still not be granted citizenship because you not only have to be a religiously persecuted minority, but you also need to belong to a specified list of religion to be granted citizenship. Yes, our country has given shelter to over millions of migrants, but without once asking them what their religion was. It has been said that certain northeastern states shall be exempted from this act under the ILP. But how do you explain the number of job losses, demographic changes, and ecological damage that this act will bring along in our, in our states? We indigenous people hardly get jobs, government services, or even seats in colleges outside the state, and this act takes away our very little hope that we hold on to. What about the Assamese, our Assamese brothers and sisters who are facing ethnic threats? What about the Assamese Bengalis who have to go to Bangladesh to get citizenship just because the NRC failed in the state of Assam? What about the minorities, the poor and rural citizens of India, the founders who do not have the documentation to prove that they were born in India? We live in a country where majority do not have the uh, convincing proof of their date and place of birth and how could this be made a criteria for uh, citizenship in a country like ours? They will be stripped of their rights as citizens of India. Swami Vivekananda said, I am proud to belong to a nation that has sheltered all refugees and all persecuted of all religion and nations of the earth. This act is highly indiscriminatory and unconstitutional, therefore I stand against this act. Thank you. Citizenship Amendment Act is an, is an act that was in the Parliament on 2019 in 11 of December. This amendment amended that the Citizenship Act of 1955 allowing the Indian citizenship for Hindu, Sikh, 
Chain Barsis and Christian religious minority who had fled, uh, fled persecutions from country like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh on December before uh, 2014. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, respected judges, and all my dear friends from different colleges. I support today's topic. The adoption of Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is a positive step in India. Why? Because this Citizenship Amendment Act brought to the world the torture of Pakistan, uh, Pakistan and the violations of human rights. The Citizenship Amendment Act saved the minorities of three different nations from being murdered or I should say from being converted. This uh, Citizenship Amendment Act shows secular nature of the nation as it is uh, allowing the six different religions to settle together and share equal rights and opportunity. Despite India is on the verge of fall by population, this case here shows that uh, they kept other interests before them. Continuously, Citizenship Amendment Act provides refuge to the religious minority who have uh, face persecution in Islamic countries. In fact, this is an act that should be adopted for the Muslim nations who are not doing anything for the Muslim refugees, Muslim persecuted. The need of the time for all of us is to work together for the development of India and for the empowerment of India, especially the poor, the downtrodden, and the marginalized. At the same time, we cannot allow the vested interest group to divide us and uh, to create disturbance. In, I support and I believe and I strongly assure that Citizenship Amendment Act does not cause any effect on the citizens of India of any religion. And we don't need to worry about this act because this act is only for those who have faced years of persecution in our neighboring countries and have no other place to go except India. I support this act because this act is about giving citizenship do the uh, persecuted refugees and not about taking anyone citizenship away. I repeat, Citizenship Amendment Act is about giving citizenship to the uh, persecuted refugees and not about taking anyone citizenship away. Thank you. A very good afternoon to everyone, especially the panel of judges and all the dear ones and respected one president this afternoon. I will be speaking against the motion. Our country in there is a blazing country where we are blessed with many religions with its richness and spirituality and its diverse culture and its way of life. And our government since independence till date have been serving the country with their main objective to serve the people. Today's Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019 I fear is not a positive step for India. The passing of this bill has been opposed by many people across all over the country and people with the, with the people of the India have read this act and we are aware of the fearful outcome of this act. And not only in India, it, this act has been identified even at the international levels uh, and international organizations like UN. And simple example, when uh, the Japanese the withdrawal of Japanese Prime Minister who in attending the international summit with India with, due to the outcome of this effect is not a good image for India. This citizenship amendment act though talks this citizenship amendment act though talks about giving citizens to India, we are much much more fearful about what is the outcome and the effect of this citizenship act. The, the policy of the government of implementing NRC is the outcome of this citizenship amendment and as a result of which the US even have sent its takes protect the rights of the illegal immigrants. Where, if it is for the well-being of the country, where is, where, where will be those illegal immigrants and which is, it is a religious persecution in fact. If it is against, if it is against, if it, if, if it is not against the will of the people, 
then why there have been protests all over the country when India needs to have a poor population control policy where there is more than 3,400 where there is more than 400 million people still living on the poverty line and when in the, one of the largest slums area in the world, why get another policy for the share of power where it is definitely going to disrupt India economically, socially and politically. We cannot say it is a positive step for India when it is against the will of the people. So the citizenship amendment of Amendment Act of 2019, I fear, is not a positive step for India. Good afternoon, respected our judges, lecturers from different colleges, and all my dear fellow friends. Today I am standing here on behalf in the motion representing the Cornerstone College to speak. Adoption of Citizenship Amendment Bill is a positive step. Yes, it is very positive. Because why? Why it is positive? Because it provides a nationality to the people of India. Here, let me clearly mention to those who are getting confused and being hearing the rumors, uh, hearing the rumors of the outside people. It has clearly mentioned in the times of Gandhi and uh, in the times of Gandhi and the they have clearly mentioned that citizen like the religious people. They have clearly mentioned the six uh, religious uh, communities which has able to be the citizens of India, even if they are outside of the country. That is Hindu, Jains, Christian, Buddhist, Paris, and Sikh. These are the religious, they can have their citizenship. And it is very true that no one can uh, against, no one can have an against, against the right to citizenship. No one has the right. And there are the minorities now, they are the ones suffering in those uh, three countries that which my friends have mentioned that Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan. Yes, it is very true that our religious people, our religion, our people standing out there, not only the Hindus but even the Christians, they are really suffering and we, have, we must, we the countrymen must have to help them to come back to our country and have a good relationship with the country so that even our economic growth and even in, in every field that India will go better. The people are talking about that we the CA is bringing the Muslim back to India, but it is no. We are we have clearly, we have clearly said in this uh, religious that there has not been nation in India, and we are not bringing any Muslims to India, but we are bringing our own countrymen to the India to give them safe and shelter. The people are saying that population, the Indian population rate is going, and and the economic is. Going, uh, and the economic growth of India is going down. No, it is not that we are bringing the people from the. Uh, people, uh, we are. It is not that we the people are bringing our own countrymen to our India. It is not because of that uh, the population is growing. It is because of the marriage. The marriage rate is going higher. It is because of that. It is because of that the population is going higher. And bringing the people to bringing our own countrymen to our country or to our own countrymen. Is, is a good thing for us so that we can have a better relationship. Thank you. A very good afternoon to one and all. Respected moderator, good day, panel of judges, and my fellow participants, both regime and opposition. I am Layin Konyak and I'm representing Capital College from Kohima. And I'll be today speaking against the favor of CAA. CAA is a threat for our country, provided with my following few points. Number one, CAA is contrary to the spirit and heart of the Indian Constitution. Nowhere in the Constitution it is mentioned that CAA, citizenship in India is based uh, on religion, but CAA is making the, making the citizenship of India based on religion. Secondly, if the CAA meant, uh, is mainly uh, its chief aim is for the provision of shelter to the refugees, and why is it confined to only Six region of three countries. What about the other uh, other faiths and neighboring countries like Burma, Sri Lanka? And thirdly, uh, if CAA aims, it is a well known fate that CAA aims to make Muslim the second class of our country. It's very apparent. As to what is the real intent of the CAA? If it is uh, to make Muslim the second class of our country. Fourthly, 
uh, India did not extend to its own citizens, and how did it say that it will extend to other citizens? Do we have enough national resources? Can we really afford other citizens? Number five, coming to our state, Nathan, we are already in flux with the in illegal immigrants in our state, and we are already facing problems and issues because of the illegal immigrants. And if we get this uh, CAA implemented and enforced in our state, I'm very much sure and terrified at the same time that we will be the minorities and the foreigners in our own land. And to conclude my point, I am very much confident, as it is clearly, it is crystal clear to say that uh, this government of India and these fellow parties just vote up this CAA only for the fulfillment of their narrow-minded manifesto. Otherwise, when the world are in flames, protesting everywhere, violence, scales everywhere, why the government is sleeping? Isn't it? Otherwise, uh, when, when there are so many questions to be answered for this CAA, why our government of India is hiding as a man that is hiding, as silent as a man that is hiding himself from the tiger? Thank you so much, and all the best to my worthy opponents. Good afternoon, everyone, respected judges, moderator, and everyone present here, especially my competitors. That was such an enticing way of putting care in a very negative way. Let me start by saying a quote by the UN on care. Giving, listen properly, giving protection, giving protection to any minority is always a positive step. Giving protection to any minority anywhere is always a positive step. With that, I can close my argument easily, saying that CAP is a positive step. Why? Why is CAP a positive step? And why are my opponents so hard on saying that CAP is not a positive step? They are confused with what is CAP. May I clearly state what is CAP? Citizenship Amendment Bill, or Act, is, a, is the law which grant citizenship to those to six religions specifically who entered India on or, on or before December 31. So it doesn't mean that after amending this bill more people are going to be flux in Northeast or in India. The fact is that they have always been in India and that they have always been consuming our resources. It never mattered. Only during this gap people are noticing those illegal migrants. Whereas in Assam they have always been in those park valleys. They have always been with us and then they have gone through a lot of treasuries, going through a lot of persecution. Just imagine your families, you Christians, this India becoming a Hindu state and we are thrown away from Nagaland. And then America, London, Sabasya, Sri Lanka is going to give us nationality, is going to give us an identity. Wow, I'll be happy. Just think of it as not in the other context but as Christians. I don't real religion in this. But we should be happy about religious or Christian brothers are coming. They are going to get an identity. They have been suffering for so long. Don't you have a part of respect or pain for them? Don't you have any sense of humanitarian work? You are speaking only of yourself. Just imagine them. For, such, for so long they have suffered. I just want to state clearly that they, they, we, citizenship bill means giving nationality, making them a citizen of India. It's not that they are going to come. They have always been, always been a part of India. They have always taken our resources. We have enjoyed their presence too. Now, let me sum up. Have you ever heard the term globalization or cultural intermix? Cultural globalization. It means intermixing of cultures. So our culture alone. It said that one culture alone is not enough to grow. When two cultures mix, when three cultures mix, when four cultures mix, the best of every culture, more ideas, the more ideas, the better. When every culture comes together, won't it be wonderful? The best of everything, not the best of one, but the best of all. Together we are strong, together we are united. I want to end with my quote again. Giving protection to any minority is always a first step. Thank you. A very good afternoon to you all. I will be representing Patkai Christian College against the Citizenship Amendment Act. Firstly, India being <coughs> India being the largest democracy working, why is there such this kind of activities rising around where all the population of the country are voicing against it, but the government is still mum, not is, uh, willing to listen to any of it. The Amisha and the Narendra Modi. Dual government, what is it happening? So I 
God has gone against through this act by sailing out to the points which are not here today. The CAA is just a divisive bill which is going to break the uh, long India 70 years of nation building proposed by our national leaders. The long 70 years were this long just for the reason of Muslim Hindu. It is it is violating the constitution where it says in the article 14 where everyone irrespective of the citizenship if they are in India they are, have their own rights and this is totally violating this article 14 as for the people of the Rohingya for the Sri Lanka where will they go? what happened to them? are they not the human beings? as cited in the article 14 of the Indian constitution it is against secularism for the first time we can see that the government of India has placed something with, uh, with regard to religion gonna give a citizenship based on religion and this is gonna break the society the Indian country as a whole. We can see that the BJP government, they are trying to play vote bank politics and which is very harmful because this vote bank politics in the long run, it never bring any good things to the country. Instead, just to win an election in the coming years, there will be poverty, there will be unemployment. What will happen to the country? We can see that the economy is going down of India. When millions of Bangladeshis migrating from East Pakistan, they come in. What will happen to the real Indians? Will they have anything to eat? A real question arises with the breaking of the Assam Airport. We can see that according to the Assam Airport 1985, people who came after 1971 will be chased out of India. But with the implementation of CAA giving citizenship, it, we are going to violate this Sri Lanka Assam Accord. NRC, it has all become in vain when you try to bring this citizenship amendment act. NRC, I'll give data on it. On 31st December 2017, only 19 million out of the 32 million came out. In 2000, 2018, out of the 40 million, only 32 came out. What happened to the rest 4 million people? What are they going to do in India? And NRC has caused a lot to the Indian economy, 12,000 crores. Um, with the help of the public tax, there is our money, 62,000 government employees. With this, I will press my. Yeah, I'll be speaking. Uh, I'll be speaking on the advantages of this citizenship amendment. Let me let, let me let me make a clarification to those people who are confused with this citizenship amendment. Act. Citizenship Amendment Act it is only to provide citizenship or provide citizenship to the refugees, uh, those who have fled from Pakistan, Afghanistan, um, Bangladesh, specifically for six minorities uh, region. Um, by amending this Citizenship Amendment Act, it does not take away any right of this those citizens of India. Um, when we look back to the histories, on 16 July 19, 1947, Mama Kanti has, has promised to give shelter to, uh, to those minorities from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and um, Pakistan who are discriminated on the basis of religion. And um, there is nothing wrong in implementing TCA um, because we are providing, we are just providing shelter for those refugees. Um, when we look back to, uh, yeah, in 1950, Jawaharlal Nehru he has stated that uh, he has stated that we should provide homes for those refugees who have split from. Those three countries uh, on the uh, on basis of persecution on basis of religion. And um, when we think nicely, those people are once a citizen of they, they, they are once a citizen of India, but due to the partition of India and Pakistan, it has uh, it has divided it has created a division among us. And I could say. This adoption of the Amendment Act is a um, positive step for India 
because it is not just a new ideas that have been implementing but uh, there are so many promise, promises by our great leaders and um, it is only to give refuge or to provide citizenship to those particular for six minorities um, minority religions from three three neighboring countries. So it's a positive step for India with the adoption of the citizenship amendment. Thank you. Once again, since the time is limited, I'll go straight to the point. The Adoption of Citizenship Amendment Act is a trade step for India. Number one, why because? How can we say that pouring a poison in a golden cup to feed our children is good for health? That is a foolish concept. Now, to, my opponent has later said about to provide citizenship. Definitely, they're going to provide a citizenship. But is that according to the Constitution? It's a, violation, it's a violation of Article 14, where the Muslims has been persecuted. The Citizenship Amendment has clearly said to give a citizenship for the, uh, for the religion who was persecuted from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. But what happened to the Sri Lanka and Myanmar? All those Hindu, Hindu Tamils, Christian Tamils in Sri Lanka. What did the government give mom in this, in this matter? Number one. Number two is, what did the government give mom in the concern of Ayindya Muslims and Rohingya Muslims in Pakistan? That is both in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan as well as in Myanmar. Now, let's come to the, about, to the Mahatma Gandhi. The constitution of India had clearly stated that to give the citizenship to all those minor, minorities religion which had persecuted but when we see the present context about the CEA, what did the violate about the Muslim? Did the constitution of India mention about the violate the Muslim? Number one, please not go for that. There is a great threat to against for the implementation of Citizenship Amendment Act because from now itself we can see that the state like Kerala, the state like Rajasthan, Punjab, they already passed a bill in the parliament to revoke this. We can see behind, we can see we can see this, 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 there is a great threat on this. If Citizenship Amendment Act is a positive threat, it's not a threat, I just, want to, I just want to say that 19 people have already passed away when the protest has already begun. 1,100 people have been already, already arrested in UP. How? Is this a positive? There is going to be a great threat in terms of economy. Why? Because even in terms of economy, we say that even today we take a one meal, and even in that we think to give to others. That is not. Thousands, thousands of people are graduating per year, and the government cannot provide a job. And still, the, the government of India has been trying to bring the oldest population in India. So, I firmly oppose and reject this bill. This is clearly citizenship amendment bill is a vote bank politics and not any positive impact for India. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon to you, respected judges, moderator, fellow debaters, and ladies and gentlemen present here. Today, I stand here to strongly affirm that the adoption of Citizenship Amendment Act, which was passed in 2019, is a positive step for India. Why? Because it is a step which is taken by the government which shows that our government is a reliable government. Now in 2014, in their manifesto, BJP manifesto, they said that they would give citizenships to um, these religious uh, persecuted, persecuted minorities. Now in 2019, 11 December, this act was passed and thus they showed their, they kept the words and they showed that they are a reliable government. Now do you want a government which is reliable, which keeps your words to stop working. Why do you go against such a government? Do you want that central government to be like our government? They said they will make roads, but what happens? It 
uh, in our state governance doesn't make roads. It's still like our condition is still uh, has not improved at all since the government, like since the present government came to be. So, do you want our government to be like? To, do you want the central government to be like our government, which is not reliable at all? Now, I heard like I heard you guys saying that this is not. Um, how do you say? It's, up, uns it's unconstitutional, it's indiscriminatory, it goes against secularism. Now I tell you, it is not. Because you are, you are viewing this because you have been influenced by misleading information. Amit Shah urges students that do not read the CAA just once and then fall into the trap. Amit Shah urges each and every one of us to go in depth. Now Article 14, it gives right to equality, but it also states that if there is reasonable classification, if there is reasonable classification and non-arbitrariness in, in an act, then that is not unconstitutional. So when we come to uh, CAA, it gives us um, reasonable reasonable classification because it talks about persecuted minorities. It talks about those sufferings in their own countries. Uh, Amit Shah also stated that it would go to the extent of going door to door to explain the merits of the CAA and it will also hold 500 meetings and reach out to three core people to let them know that CAA is not unconstitutional but it is a positive step for India. Thus I strongly believe and I strongly stand on my belief that it is a positive step for India. Thank you so much. I want to break freedom, not religion. I want to spread generosity, not inhumanity. I want to see equality, not partial generosity. I want to script the sacrifices of living, not the pains of prosperity. I want to take my first breath in the lap of saffron and my last breath in the tricolor. Good afternoon, everyone, respected panel of judges, moderator, and member of the house. I, Esther Harris, strongly stand against the motion stating that the, adop the adoption of Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is not a positive step for India. The following points strongly support my statement. Citizenship Amendment Act has made religion as the basis of nationhood, which is a direct contribution of the Article 14 of the Indian Constitution. How can we say that the C CAA is a positive state when it discriminates the right to equality enshrined in our Constitution? It gives preferential treatment to Muslim minorities coming from Muslim majority countries. It is discriminatory as it gives protection to those Hindu foreigners that the BGP government is trying to bring into India in the camouflage of giving same favors to other sections of the communities like Christian, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, and Parsis. It is discriminatory, uh, discriminatory, whereas it largely discriminates the Muslims, the Armenians, the Shais, the Rohingyas, the Oriyas from China, those that have been here before December 31st, 2014. Where will they seek protection? It is very highly discriminatory. Second point, it is, a, it is a demographic threat to the religious minority, particularly in Northeast India. Indigenous tribal minorities will be submerged under these immigrants if this act, you say, it, if it is positive. Being exempted from this act is just a mere relief that the government is trying to provide to us. It strikes at the root of India's secular and democratic principles. It is a dangerous way to provide citizenship. Four, it, this act also fails to take into account those inhabitants of these border regions, many of whom follow indigenous religions and are not identified as being part of any of the six selected religious communities. Where will they seek protection from? Do you still opine that CAA is a positive step? Speaking to what my further opponent has been saying, that it will boost economy. How can the people that have been thrown from the country and are seeking shelter boost economy when they don't when they can't afford their own basic amenities? Here, in conclusion, I would just like to state that this act is not a positive step for India and it is a poison being served to us in a golden cup. Thank you. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, respected fellow judges, moderator, and my fellow competitors. Today I will be going for the motion of the House that I support CAA. The amendment of CAA is a positive uh, in, is a positive state for the government of India. For, for India. India is a secular state. India provides an opportunity for everyone. India is a welcoming state. India is a country of acceptance. All these ideals which have uh, been the ones of so many nations have been sh uh, shown through this adoption of CAA, which was passed on 11 December 2019. And, uh, approved by the President on 12 December 2019. It gives citizenship to those uh, illegal immigrants from Bangladesh, um, from Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Those are these countries are Muslim dominant countries which uh, have been persecuting this minorities. They do not have an identity. They do not have a stand. They do not have uh, they do not know where they belong. So giving a chance to them is a work of humanitarian that the government of India is trying to do. Why would the government of India try to uh, give an act which is not profitable for the country? Islamic um, Islamic nations are on a rise in this world this this day. It has the highest growth of 1.8 percent, and now the whole uh, the whole world is working under this trade. Now, what India is doing with this is that through CAA, it is showing the world that mm, this Islamic states have been very um, hostile to other nations, and that it is a threat. And India will coming has portrayed their true nature to the world. So this will increase the alliances of India with the rest of the world. And uh, India has been working greatly to um, be superpowers of the country, uh, of, the, uh, of the world. And so this will provide a chance for India to form uh, better alliances. Talking about the illegal immigrants, they are not um, just doing anything. They are coming here and they are working. So through uh, give, uh, citizenship, their, their incomes and their um, services are taken into account. This will help in the GDP of the country. So that's how I support this year. Thank you. First of all, good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Respected moderator, panel of judges, my competitors, and the speakers out here. Today I will be speaking against the motion on the topic, adoption of CAA. Uh, most of my friends have set out the basic points. Let me go deeper to the facts. Firstly, the population. Being that little Americans, we already know India as the second largest population in the world. So it's good to be the largest population in the world, but we have to accommodate the people and to feed them. So like, I don't think India is capable enough to feed the population that will be coming out of India, especially the Muslims, I'm sorry, the Hindus from Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh. And, uh, Speaking forward, like uh, the Muslims, the Muslims from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, they they can even disguise as Hindus and come into our country. Like it's not a big deal to change our religion to get shelter, to get citizenship for all, most of the people. And speaking further, the citizenship, uh, the people born in India, they are denied citizenship. Whereas the people coming from out of India, like. The countries, the three countries specifically, they are given citizenship even if they are not born in India. Like for other people, like the Muslims, those are born in India, they are denied citizenship. Like uh, we have many political leaders, I mean the freedom fighters who have been fighting for the freedom of our country, like the Mulana Abul Kalam Azad and the Ali brothers who have been fighting for the freedom of our country. But their religion, their religion people, the Muslims are not given citizenship in our country. And speaking about Assam. They have, been already, they have already built detention centers for people who are, who are not under NRC. And the government is like playing 
very cleverly, thanks to change the NRC into NPR, National Population Register, which comes under the UADA, the other. People who are having other and have specific, uh, sorry, specific uh, place to live for six months, they, are, they might get citizenship, according to the NPR, National Population Register. And speaking about the Constitution, like, uh, the, according to Article 17, it provides equality to all religions, but the, the Act goes against it. Like it doesn't provide uh, citizenship to the Muslims. And yeah, the current government is trying to change the entire demography of India, making trying to make it Hindustan. And try, ending, trying to end it, like the Act is, can be regarded as comedy of errors by the government, the present government, because the uh, debate is being taken to the EU, the European Union, for debate. So, winding up, I'm strongly opposing the citizenship in Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, respected judges, moderator, friends, and my fellow competitors. Uh, this afternoon, I would just like to say that with the CAA, we have a very huge opportunity here. The opportunity to do the right thing, to do the humane thing. Uh, CA deals with immigrants who are already here. We're not talking about the immigrants who will be coming, but who are already here. So it's not like after this uh, passing of this act, sudden influx of immigrants will come. No, they're already here and they're already illegally taking jobs. Like we have all used Chukali's ministries and all this. So it will not cause an influx. But we have an opportunity here to do the right thing. Why do you think they ran away from their countries? Because they were persecuted. Just imagine like you're in your home and your own family is harassing you, threatening you and you and you have no choice but to run away. So we have a very big opportunity here to do the humane thing. Now, uh, my father always used to say like, whenever somebody tries to do the right thing, you will always face a lot of opposition. Before this bill was mentioned, no one was talking about in this kind of magnitude, the immigrants. No one was mentioning it. But as soon as uh, the government is trying to push this act, everyone started rising up. So it means that we're trying to do the right thing. So uh, I would like to mention, I hope everyone knows the story of Copernicus, how he stood alone against the churches and stated that, no, the earth is not the center, but the sun is the center. And he was persecuted for that. But now we know that he was speaking the truth and that he stood for the truth. So I just want to state once again that we have a very huge opportunity here to do the human thing, to do the right thing. So I hope you all take a stand and move in a step that I believe will be positive. Thank you very much. Good afternoon everyone. Today I'm standing here to against the motion of the House. The adoption of CAA 2019 is a positive step for India. No, it's not a positive step for India. We can say that it's negative by focusing on several perspectives. Let us go back to mainland India. It is discriminating the people and it is letting the people suffer on religious perspective. And the people and it is letting the people have a fear of religious perspective. By saying this, it is not to sound malicious or to hurt any body sentiment, but it is a fact. Let us come back to our northeastern region. We are being suffered from different demographic issues, which is rising. We are suffering from different threats. Why is our leaders doing this to us? India was built with a motto and with an idea unity in diversity, which is not functioning according to that at all. Okay, let us come back to Nagaland. Our Nagas, we Nagas, we are going to, one fine day, we are going to lose our identity and culture due to this act. And why are the leaders not taking any action? Why are they leaving us clueless? The government, the government and the leader are trying to use the maturation politics in India which is not acceptable because India is a democratic country and it's a secular country. This majority, they are trying to use the tyranny of majority 
on us, on we people, on you and I, which is not appropriate because India is a democratic country and it should be functioned accordingly. Alright, it is a journey to us. It is an indigenous, they are trying to promote secularism and they are trying to, this government, they are trying to only promote the politics of division. By seeing this and by focusing on the present scenario, we get to know that what we are observing or what we are focusing is more or less like a reality, or but it's more like a nightmare. It's less like a reality and more like a nightmare. They are trying to hurt us and they are trying to Whatever they are trying is not the right way. By seeing and focusing on this, we get to know what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. And the Citizenship Amendment Act, which was passed by our government, is not the right thing and it is a negative step for India. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Respect the panel of judges, teachers from all colleges, teaching faculty members, friends, and of course you, my worthy opponents. Well, I support, I support the adoption of the Citizenship Amendment at the Indian as a positive step for India. Because this, because this act aims to provide citizens to minorities who are facing religious persecution in the neighboring as Islamic countries. And there's no harm in Providing home for those people who are who are facing religious persecution, and because well, way back in 1947, Mahatma Gandhi has said, "Our Hindu and Sikh brothers who are facing religious persecution in Pakistan, by all means they are they can stay in our country." So. So it is the duty of the Indian government to provide to provide a place for the refugees. And even during the partition, this the Indian promise the Indian promise to take care of the refugees. The Pakistan did not take. We India did. Therefore, it is our obligation to take care of those minorities. And well, here my dear fellow opponents here say that we we are we Indians are trying to make an Hindustani state. But no, my dear opponents, we are not trying to make this in Indian and Hindustani state. We are just trying to fulfill what our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, has said. Because as I said earlier, because he said the Sikh and the Sikh and the Sikh and Hindu brother brother who are there in. Pakistan are allowed by enemies by are allowed to come here. So we are just fulfilling all those duties. And in 1991, well, in 1991, in, there in Afghanistan, there were one black, this, there were one like Hindu and Sikh refugees. And now, just these days, you know, at present, it has only, it has now or decreased to five. Only five thousand. So I just want to caution you. Like, where have all the people gone? Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So my question is based on what the opponent has said. So my opponent from the uh, motion bench, Stephen, has justified her stand on the topic by using humanitarian grounds. So my question is like, um, is it really logical to help uh, legal immigrants from another country by bringing them in and providing them the resources while the rest of the country is facing uh, major problems of their own when it comes to access to clean uh, basic amenities like clean water, electricity, food, and shelter? And yeah, that's it. Well, thank you for the question, number four. Um, why we are bringing all those immigrants here is because in Pakistan and Afghanistan, there is the highest number of ISIS present inside here. They 
persecute the people, they pressure the people, rape the women. So why can't India save them, save them from all those ISIS members as well as? And why country? And why do you say, why do you say that Indian country cannot provide food and shelter? Where we have this NGO, the self help group, the private associations to protect the immigrants as well as. And the Indian government is doing that due to the high presence of ISIS member in Pakistan and Afghanistan compared to Bangladesh. Um, my question is, uh, how can you say that due to illegal immigrants, why we the Nordic people are restrained or neglected from um, this old government jobs? Where, unlike the, where the central government is providing us special preference in all those exams like UPSC, why do you say that we are neglected from all this uh, government jobs? Unlike every year, this uh, Assam and Tripura, we have highest number of passport students from this UPSC, at least 30 members. And how can you say that uh, Northeast people are restrained or neglected from this all central service exams? Why? Thank you for the question. So, like, as you have asked me the question, uh, even though facts show that we are there's a lot of pass out or things like that, the reality is that there are still lots of people unemployed. And there's still no solution to this. Uh, even though the government or the central government, the state government or the central government provides opportunity to people for employment and all those things, we still see a lot of people who are educated but unemployed. We have to face the reality and not just uh, be happy with facts which show little improvement and I know that I, the question that I asked it sounds a bit selfish on our part as in like uh, not being open to helping other people but when it comes to facts like uh, our religion, our land or our identity being threatened by other people from immigrants I think we should take a stand to give a strong no and protect ourselves and also, like, not let other people come and be majorities in our own land. Thank you. My question to my worthy opponent is, firstly, I would like to make it clear that the provisions under the Constitution Amendment Act 2019 already exist under the Citizenship Act 1955 for the minorities in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, but without singling out any religion. So how can you say that this is not discriminatory? Well, thank you for your questions. I think that it's whatever you have said is discriminating our people. We can accept every everyone, whether it's Muslim or any other, but our India is not stable now. We can and the Muslim they are living there is their home, their hometown only, their home country. So it's like your parents won't keep out from your home. I think. I think they, uh, our Indian peoples, they are suffering here. Most of the Christians and all, while well, they're preaching, they, they have been killed, tortured, and so, so many things that we have seen on social media. So we are serving them. But for Muslims, we are not ready to accept them. That's why we are not accepting them. And for my question is, for uh, the camp already mentioned that it's not, uh, it's not, Impose on the states, I'll be, I'll be state like Nagaland, Mizoram, but still then we're protesting against. What's the reason behind it? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, my fellow opponent, I would like to let you know that the ILP exists even before the Constitution Amendment Act was formulated, and this is just a cosmetic change. So it, it will affect Nagaland. It will affect the northeastern states that you've mentioned, and it, it has always been, and it will continue to. To rebuttal, I would like to uh, I would like to rebuttal my fellow my worthy opponents. Um, my worthy opponents, you have clearly stated that we are bringing Muslims to India. So you yourself, you have admitted that this is against secularism. India is a welcoming country. Why aren't all the religions being welcomed here? Also, say by one of my uh, opponents. Uh, he talked about Amit Shah. So, how can you call a government as reliable when they keep on lying to us? We do not believe in a lying government. Um, regarding the door-to-door, -door, uh, regarding Amit Shah's door-to-door -door explanation on what Constitution Amendment Act is to everyone, my fellow opponents, you should 
by you should understand by the very by this very fact that the BJP government hurrying to make to stitch up this constitution and then should make you understand that this is just to uh, to make up for the consolidation of their vote banks that they lost in uh, the state of Assam. Thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you on the call of date which you have clearly mentioned, the call of date of 2014, because um, Prime Minister Long have said, if you are a persecuted Hindu, you don't, you don't have to bring any documents and thus you will get the citizenship. Is it not fearful? Is it not unconstitutional? And since you have clearly mentioned it is not fearful to any Indian citizens, taking the example of Tripura, Assam, and uh, the way of assurances they give to the notice, is it not fearful and unconstitutional to Indians? Thank you. It's a very fear. I know Frank have mentioned that uh, the CEA by adopting this amendment we are doing something like related to humanity. And you know Frank mentioned that by protection, giving protection to any minority is also is always a positive step. There is no uh, like our father of our nation have said before, Hindu and Sikh religion from those countries are allowed to come in India in any time. That means we are uh, we're just this act is about uh, you know just giving citizenship. We are not uh, this act doesn't have any. You are against this act. You have mentioned that um, you are totally against that uh, CA is giving citizenship to persecuted refugees. You really tell my lady that I have mentioned. So why? Thank you for the question. The Citizenship Amendment Act, as you have, as you have questioned, is Citizenship Amendment Act is, I would say, and I fear is rather religious, discriminatory on the basis of religion. Because it cannot, it cannot be just giving citizens to the people of India. It is beyond this giving citizenship to the people of India. As you have said, it is only giving citizenship of citizenship to, the, to those persecuted religions of whatever they have mentioned, then where are the Muslims and other persecuted religions if it is only to do and it is if it is nothing to fear, if it is nothing fearful for the Indian constitution, what will be the case? Taking the example like like I've er mentioned earlier, Tripura and Assam, and why are there many, uh, if it is constitutional, if it is nothing to fear, why are there many assurances to the notice people that this I inner and permit is going to save us, which is not. As our ministers have them have already said this inner land permit is not going to save is not going to save the Nagas alone. It's not going to save any implemented IAPs. So this citizenship amendment act is a fearful one for the share of power and it is a kind of vote bank politics where the government is trying to the, where the government is trying to struggle for power for long process and holding of power which is not going to be a positive step for the Indians thank you. My question is in response to my opponent's statement that CAA is not against uh, religion. There are so many uh, religious minorities who are historically being persecuted. But this CAA is confined to only six religions of three countries. So my question is, what is the real intent of CAA? Thank you for the question. Uh, 
uh, and I'm talking my opponent, that she said CA is only why it is only six really uh, six community. I would uh, uh, clearly like to say Muslims. If you want Muslims, Muslims have been why uh, there is a question being asking why not Muslims are giving uh, citizenship to the India Muslims. They have already given the country state like Bangladesh and Pakistan, and now. In the times, in the ancient times of history, there have been only these six religions which have been mentioned in India. That is the reason this, uh, the religions which have been mentioned earlier like Buddhist, Hindus, these are the Hindus, these are the religions which have been uh, the uh, religious, these are the main religious and they are the, uh, and they are the, uh, I should say, they are the real Indians who should have to say that uh, they are the Indian countries. That is why these six communities have been a special categories, uh, special categories for their uh, citizenship. Question? Uh, and now for my question is that uh, it is a very simple. Now, would you like to be a part of a Muslim country like Pakistan, Bangladesh or Afghanistan? I assure you, you will say no. And if yes, then you should have to go back to Pakistan and Afghanistan and stay there. And no, if you are saying no, then why? When you don't like to be a part of the Pakistan and India, then why are you letting your own countrymen to suffer there like as a hell out there? They are torturing them. See. I will give the best example. Uh, Muslims, Muslims cannot be tortured for reading Quran, but the Hindus for reading Sikh and the, for Christians reading Bible in Muslim country are being tortured. And that is the real reason we want to help the religious. And why we are so against food to your own countrymen? Please give me that answer. And I assure you that if you give me that answer, you are the winner. Thank you so much to my worthy opponent for this amazing question. Well, I would never want to be a part of Pakistan, even if I get the chance, because I'm a black Indian and, and I'm very proud to be born in this Netherlands and as a part uh, to be and to be a part of Indian. Um, and I am not against those Indian citizens, Indian minority, uh, those religions who are persecuted in these three countries. But uh, we are just, uh, uh, but we are not against, I am not against those uh, religions, but just wondering like why it is only confined to these religions, because there are many uh, minorities religions who have been, who, who is, and who are still facing persecutions, so like, I am not against those religions in the uh, Indian members, but for instance, like, uh, um, in Sri Lanka, there is Indian Tamils, and then there are also present persecutions there. So why only this? Why is this CAA only confined to this uh, three countries? That's that's my uh, only concern, and I'm not against those countries that are being favored. Thank you. Okay, then let's give it a second. You guys are saying that the CAA doesn't have to do anything about religion. Okay, I'm giving a set for that now. Then let's look down the line 10 to 20 years or 40 50 years. India is a fertile country. If we keep on uh, entertaining these people and give them citizenship bill uh, on the ground of being persecuted, keep aside of being religion, then what will happen to the remaining Indians? As you can see, unemployment is at its peak. We are not getting jobs, and uh, development is not happening, corruption is everywhere. Then adding more people to this country, how can it justify all this? How can the CAA help in improving this country? Um, thank you for the question. I'm not Amit Shah or Narendra Modi, but what I know, based on what I know, I'll be answering my question. And even if it doesn't satisfy you, please forgive me. Okay, so um, okay, so based on they are saying about we are asking about CAA citizenship and when they get citizenship, how can they help? So. The criteria for getting citizenship in India is 11 years, but this CA specific they are getting only on six years. So 
even if you were not to give them CAA, they would eventually be a part of India because they will be staying for 11 years. That is sure because they will never go again in Af Afghanistan, Pakistan, they will be persecuted again. In the end, they will eventually become a citizen of India. But for now, they are getting it in 6 years instead of 11 years. That's the only um, thing. So, how can it promote economic welfare? So, one is better than two, two is better than three. We all know the idea. But how? So, when they become a part of us, like they have always been a part of us, as I have always said, they have been in India for six or more years. They have always been a part of us. So when they uh, we recognize them as our own citizens, their ideas, their culture, it will mix together. Wow, it will be beautiful. Don't look only on the back side. When we are confined only to our culture, and don't, and when we do not accept change, that is when we lose, and that is only our loss. That's my answer. Um, okay, my question is, so during the elections, this citizenship bill was a manifesto, was a manifesto of the BJP government. So why didn't you question there? And why are you revolting so much, getting ready even to die for this? Act? You should have started from there, you should have let them come to power. Okay, now you may say that you know, criticize the government, it's so much for that, that's the first one. Second is that, um, if you are one of those people, if you have been persecuted, if you don't have a place to live, and if a country is giving you nationally, it giving you an identity, please be in their shoes. And if you are saying that, if you are one of those, and if you are saying that, yeah, the country is giving me citizenship, but since I will go and I will destroy the country, I will boost the economy, if you are against such things, be like that, would you, um, my question here is that, would you, be happy if a country is giving you an identity or not. Would, would you accept it or not? Would you go against it or not? Please think that and answer me. Thank you. So for the first question which you raised, in the manifesto which you cited, uh, they're going to go in, uh, in support of the CAA. But in 2014, let me be clear that in Assam, the BJP government, they put up a manifesto that they promised to stop migration. And what is this in 2019? This is just an illusion to the people. That is why we are suffer against this. Because in 2014, people of Assam were food. And now they are realizing that this is not just for our place. That's why we are going against of it. I guess you are prepared for that. And you have been saying to us that why now? Why not before? You see things we don't see at first, but when we see it and when we try to correct it, there is no harm in it. And as a population, you can see the whole nation is shouting. You know what is happening to this BJP government? Not even a single media word that Narendra Modi came out in public. Instead, only behind your own running news media channel where Amit Shah, you have all these supporters saying Jay Shuram. That's all. But the real fact is that they are not answering the question which you are demanding. And for the second, yes, it is good that people are giving citizenship to us, but not at this kind of pretext to India. When we, you get the citizenship in US, the country is having good economy, but in India, the people, the population, that is us. What are we going to eat? I will, I will never share my plate with another person if I have none. And that is happening in India. Below poverty line, people are sleeping in New Delhi, highway roads. And where are we going to stay? Even if the Indians still they don't have it. So I guess the CAA is nothing but just a delusion of cheap political uh, vote banks, which is not going to help us in any way, just for the election to win power for everything. Okay, <clears throat> my fellow opponents have stated that there is nothing wrong in giving a citizenship to legal immigrants. So my question is, how can you say that when someone became the owner of your own house, is still a great opportunity? Thank you for questions. Yeah, we can say that giving citizenship to the illegal immigrants is not wrong. It's not. It's not wrong thing. But we are doing a uh, Indian work. Um, it doesn't mean that we are providing citizenship to the all the yeah the all the migrants, but. It is clear said that all those who have, all those who have came here in India, 
on the uh, yeah, last young, 31st is important for me. But not to everyone. Um yeah, have a good day. Why everyone why everyone was so silent when they first migrated in India? Um, why did you start protesting when uh, this scene was invented or when we when Indian government stated to give the citizenship to them? Why not at the first? Okay, thank you for the question. I guess you say that why not in the first? But in a, in a natural like this one, say that it is always the right time to do the right thing. It is always the right time to do the right thing. Why? Because Citizenship Amendment Act is totally against, which is unconstitutional. Now, now we can see. Yesterday is different, and today is different. Why? Because we can see clearly what is going to happen tomorrow. Today. I guess I say as I already mentioned before that thousands of people are retreating for you. The government cannot provide job per household. And if we give citizenship all those illegal immigrants, they are not dead and done. Might be they are intellectually better than us. Therefore, if we give opportunity to them, well, where where uh, where shall we stand? Where are we going to stand? In the in the days to come, what are we going to give feedback? What are we going to respond to our children? This is the reason why we are standing, uh, stay, standing against this Citizenship Amendment Act. Thank you. Here's my question. With all due respect to our present government, uh, with what my what your opponent has mentioned, if you say it is a positive act uh, step, why is it inequal and why is your reliable government discriminating the Americans? and sheds from Pakistan, Rohingyas and Uyghurs that have been here, existing here before 31st December 2014. If not provided citizenship, what is your government going to do with them? How is it going to help them or protect them? That's my question. Thank you. Uh, well, first, first of all, let me tell you that um, these Rohingya Muslims are also a sect of Muslims. And so, in Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh are they have a state religion which is Muslim. So when this um, act is passed, and when they are not given citizenship in India, they will be deported to Muslim because they uh, that is their original country. That will be their original homeland. So like, um, yeah, that's my answer. And then my question is, uh, before I post my que question, I would like to give my rebuttal. Uh, I've heard two, three times you guys mentioning about partial generosity. Why partial generosity? Now, let me tell you about scarce resources. We have scarce resources. The world has scarce resources. So, um, what we are doing, what the CAA is doing, what the present government is doing, that they are trying to pick up the least uh, disadvantaged community, communities to help them so that uh, whatever we have, what, uh, we can help them with whatever we have. Uh, like even our first speaker question was when something like this, like we have uh, little resources, we have um, like we don't have enough. Like why are we giving to others? So uh, using this question, I, I would like to answer you this: that um, we have scarce resources. So like we are trying to make the best use of it, and then tell them, I mean, and help them, and help those peoples. Uh, so my question is. Like it has already been played partially, but mm, did you know that uh, in the CAA does not mention about? Um, I mean, mentions that ILP states with ILP and um, tri tribal reserve areas. This CAA will not be implemented on these states. So if yes, so if yes, if you know that this is mentioned, then tell me how this is going to change our demography. If no, then let me tell you that it is mentioned and that our states, our culture, our identity, which is ILB and tribal reserved areas, will not be affected at all. Thank you for the question. In response, I would like to say that exemption from this act 
as I've mentioned before, is just trying to provide a mere relief to us. Even if we, they are not given citizenship, uh, they will be given citizenship on the basis of their religion and then the time that they have been staying here. So eventually, they will be able to enter Nablin. And if they are able to enter Nablin, they will, be, they will obviously cause a threat to our people and then to the indigenous staying or residing here. And in rebuttal, you say that uh, to the least disadvantaged people, they are giving opportunity to have citizenship. So are, are those people that I've mentioned earlier not disadvantaged? Don't they deserve humanity? Like you've been stating from the first speaker to the last, it is a humanitarian work and you should be providing humanity. So don't they deserve this? And you asked, uh, you stated that they will be deported to their own land. So deported to be persecuted again? They don't have an option anywhere. That's why we are asking. If you said that this act is a positive one, why is not why is it not equal for everyone? Those two words, equality and positive, can uh, equality, inequality and positive cannot go hand in hand. If you said that this act is a positive step for India, it should be equal and it should be provided to all the disadvantaged section of this community. In your bottom, you ask that. Why we have not risen our voice against it from the early? Let me tell you, Nagaland has always been taking such steps, but it was not in a major one. And we have been dealing with these issues. Threat to indigenous people from uh, such immigrants has always been a hot topic. And if it was a positive act, you would not have to go door to door convincing us, and you know that it is not realistic at all. Therefore, I strongly affirm that Citizenship, uh, citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is not a positive step for India. Thank you. My question is, like you said, India is a secular state. We all know India, the, being the largest within the constitution of the world, India is a secular state. But does the citizenship amendment goes with the constitution of India, being the secular state? Thank you for the question. India is a secular state, and uh, India is a secular state, and religion has nothing to do with the state because uh, when we talk about CAA, it's not talking about taking people from other uh, religion, it's about taking people who are persecuted, who are having troubles. And being in a uh, Muslim state, it has, uh, it's from a Muslim country, and so taking people from Muslim country is irrelevant because um, it is the other powers, it is the other, uh, it is the other religions who are being persecuted here in this case. So I think taking in people who are in need, taking in people who want shelter, I think it's more, uh, it's, that's the case in this reason. Uh, so my question to you, to my fellow opponent is, you have mentioned that um, Indian citizens are not grant, uh, given citizenship, while uh, through CAA, the illegal immigrants are given, given citizen. I want to ask how the people of India has been denied citizenship because as far as I know the Muslim freedom fighters they are the one who conspired against us and because of power and they are the one who went away by choice. Uh, like I said, uh, the citizens of India are not given citizenship. Uh, what I mean to say was, like the Muslims who are already in India, who have been living in India for recent decades, they have not been given citizenship because the people coming from all of India out of India, the Muslims, the Sikhs, the, sorry, not the Muslims, the Hindus, the Sikhs, the Christians from coming out of India, they are given direct citizenship if they come to stay in India for six years. The, those refugees are given. But what about the people already living in India? Already, the Muslims already living in India, they have been living since decades. Like, you know, the Mughals who came to India for, in the 16th century, the Sultans who came to India in the 12th century. They have been living for ages, for centuries. But in the present condition, they are not given citizenship, like the present living in India. Like recently I've been to Delhi, there I've been to Jamia and Islamia. There are the Muslims who are protesting against the CAA. Because they have been living in India since the past decades, but they are not given citizenship. Like these are not the people who are came from Bangladesh. They won't come directly to Delhi from Bangladesh. These are people living in Delhi for decades. Those who came those who came to India ages uh um, sorry, centuries ago. That's all. And uh, to answer what she said to my question, uh, those India, she said the countries in India, I mean, sorry, the Muslim countries, yes, those countries are those countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, those are Muslim countries. But Hindus are also given citizenship in Sri Lanka and Burma as well. 
So it's not very to say Hindus are not considered in other countries. Thank you. My question to my fellow opponent is, what is the probability or possibility that makes you think that going against the government through our protests and fight back is the wrong thing to do? Thank you for the question. I believe that the main protests came started from Assam, and that was because this CA uh, contradicted the Assam Accords in 1995. So Assam has a legitimate reason to oppose the CA. However, because of the Assam protests, all of the other uh, states in which protests erupted. They, could, they didn't understand the actual objectives of the CA properly, properly and then they just followed uh, the leader, that is Assam. So, uh, it's a case of mass hysteria, I believe, where people have not properly understood the strict criteria in which citizenship will be given by the CA. So that is my answer. And some of my rebuttal points are uh, I would like to make an analogy like, imagine uh, your house, which is your country, and a stranger has already entered your house, and you don't know who, who this person is, and they have occupied a small portion of your house, and there is no way to interact with them, because India is not signed with the 1951 Refugee uh, Convention, which means there's no way, there's no structure, no law to deal with those strangers. What this CA will do is, help us recognize who they are and then use their skills, their talents for our benefit. So that is an analogy I want to make. Uh, and my question is, uh, I have heard some few <coughs> points about losing our identity. So it doesn't say that those immigrants will become Nagas. It doesn't say that those citizens will become Assamese. It only says they will become Indian citizens. And Protecting our identity is the job of you and I. So, why do you think that uh, we will lose our identity if this bill is passed? Thank you. Thank you for the question. All right, talking about our identity, we are living in Nagaland, where it is full of different cultures and identity. And I say that we will be losing our identity if this bill is through this bill because the illegal immigrants will be the majority and we will be the minority and they will overpower us. And that is, we are going to see it and face it. So, before we face it, why don't we be aware? I should say that only the misleaded and the unconscious and unconcerned mind will not be aware of the appraising issues in our, cult, in our present aspect. Why don't we be aware before those things happen? I should say that we should be careful before anything happens. And for the rebuttal, during the protest, I've seen you guys, you were there, and I say that your support for the CAA is fake, it's not genuine. Thank you. Okay, so my question is, is it really wise to allow minorities from the different country who in turn will become a majority in the land that they will occupy. Okay, so first, okay, so thank you for the question. And yeah, this we should be very clear that Hindu was a majority in India, and Hindu and Hindu was a minority in Hindu was a this Hindu was a majority in India and minority in Pakistan, and Muslim was a majority in Muslim as a majority in Pakistan and minority in India. So yeah, so we can provide refugees to do the we can provide refugees to those we can provide a place for the refugees because this India our India is a population of like mostly it's common population of the in Hindu. Okay, so like oh, now this egg now this field has already become egg. And our forefathers as 
we regard Mahatma Gandhi as our forefather, as the father of the nations. And if we don't accept this egg, we're just sitting, say, sitting aside what he has said. Because what he has promised. And so, where, where will all these refugees will go? If we don't, where will all these refugees will go? Now I should announce the winner. The first, the first goes to CH College. That was against the motion. And then the second goes to two of them. Yeah. One is there are second, uh, two seconds. One is Saint John. And then the other is Unity. And uh, there was one person to participate short in the batch of uh, against the motion. So sorry, I has calculated the average and then uh, group wise the winner goes to the, the uh, against the motion. So Congratulations to you all and then yeah, have a good evening. Thank you.